This lesson is going to be on the revelation of God. And revelation means that somebody has experienced God and He's helped them and taught them and then they reported or wrote down what God did and how He did it. And so that's kind of the revelation. That's how we, one of the ways that we get to know God is by revelation. Somebody in the Old Testament that has experienced God and they wrote down these things for us so we can know Him. And, you know, in, uh, First Peter 3 talks about all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What do we mean by inspiration? When we go to 2 Peter and it tells us what inspiration is. Inspiration is where God wanted to talk to us he loved us and he cared about us and he wanted to communicate with us. But because we're unholy and he is holy, he couldn't just communicate and talk to us. So what he did is he sent the Holy Spirit, and it tells us that in Second Peter, he sent the Holy Spirit to holy men of God and they penned the words of God. So from the Bible, we have God's word that he sent the Holy Spirit to and he told him what to say and he told these holy men of God what God was saying and they wrote down what God said. So every word in the Bible is God's word. He wrote it, but he sent the Holy Spirit to these men to write it. There's over 35 different authors. It was over a period of about 1,500 years that it took to write it. So God used a lot of different people. He used, used some that were um, like uh, sometimes I lose my turn the thought. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's uh, farmers and there's fishermen and doctors and just a whole bunch of different people, over 35 different people that God sent the Holy Spirit to to tell them what he wanted to tell us. And so they wrote down so that we have God's word and we can read what God wanted to say to us. So that's where we're going with the lesson today. Is how do we know God? One of the ways is through his word. We read his word and we find out more about him. But the one we want to talk about today is revelation. And he gives the people insight and direction so that they can tell us about God. So let's listen to what Hebrews 11 tells us about these different people. And then I'll go back and make some comments on each one of those. Okay. chapter 11, which we know is the faith chapter, uh, says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders received witness. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaks. 
By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing where he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and uh, pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had the opportunity to, re to, re to return. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly, whereafter God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. And by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called counting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, and worshipped leaning on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Yes, he, he, uh, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Sorry, I'm used to the new King James. <laughs> by faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by the dry land, which the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encompassed about seven days. Wow. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that um, believed, with them that believe not, 
when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I eat more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel walkings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tested, slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having received witness through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Okay. going to be Moses and Abraham and the experiences that they had with God. We get to know God by what they say and what he's done. And remember that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And so this inspiration is, is God sent the Holy Spirit to us so that he had these holy men of God right what he wanted to say to us. And he does love us and he does care for us. He's got a plan for our life. And so we might think, well, I'm in here. And I don't get out. I may be in here a long time or I don't know how long, but God's got a plan. And his plan is always perfect. Who would have known that when I, in 1997, when I had a brain injury and they had to cut my head open and get in there, that 60 years later I'd be sitting talking to you guys about the Lord. It's impossible to think what God can do. His ways are past finding out. But he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we can't see everything that God is going to do, but what he wants us to know, he will reveal to us through the scriptures, through revelation, somebody talking to us about what God has done for them. So we're going to do something different right now before I go into these different people. And uh, Don and Martha do flagging. How many of you have ever seen flagging done before? Where's the flag? Okay. So they're going to do that and they're going to explain to you a little bit about what flagging does and why they do it. And so we just turn it over to them and let them go ahead and show you what flagging is all about. Can you start? first met Don, um, I had seen worship flags. Uh, I had been dedicated to the Lord for many years and loved worship. Uh, I loved to raise my hand. I, I, could, I can't sit still when I'm worshiping the Lord. It's just like impossible because I'm so grateful from where I've come from. 
uh, he was up front using flags and I thought he was crazy. But then I got to know him and found out his story, how he had come through so much in life from uh, <laughs> a really dark life, but he could share a little bit if he wants. And God miraculously saved his life many, many times. And he has confirmed miracles. And he was just so grateful that he was up there. He had to do something more than just raise his hands. So uh, he began to borrow flags from a lady that we knew that was using flags in worship. And I began to understand that it wasn't just somebody wanting attention. It was his heart flowing out in gratitude to God for these beautiful um, fall flags that were showing the glory and the beauty of the Lord. So I talk, I talk about it. When I first picked up a little flag, all I can say is the power of God hit me physically. And I began to use it as if I always had like somebody trained or something. I didn't understand that and I knew it was a spiritual thing and that it was connecting me with a new level of worship and a new level of being connected to the Lord. Knowing that that was spiritual. <laughs> Woohoo! So that was really awesome. Um, I'll let him take it. So again, flags are used throughout the Bible. Um, one of the names of God is his banner over us. And there's many, many other scriptural references to flags. And flags are used everywhere. You have the United States flag for, you know, countries. You have flags of uh, ships use them to guide uh, which side of the boat or, or aircraft where to land. So they tell you to do things and then denote things. So there's many different uses of flags. And so it's the same in uh, scriptural reference, in, in biblical. So that's in the natural and in our, uh, in our world all around us. And so with God here, we, some of our flags uh, call in the presence of God. Some are declaring something. We have flags that say the name of Jesus. Well, there's not too much interpretation for that. The name of Jesus, most people know, even if you don't believe in him. And we bring that flag everywhere, even out on the street and in all kinds of places. And non-believers are drawn to it and because very, the very word of God says everyone will be drawn to the name of Jesus and we see that all the time and we get to pray for the people just bringing that Jesus banner just everywhere and a lot of the other flags denote the glory of God calling his presence and uh, so we've just seen a, a great deal of um, his glory come in that so it's and when Martha mentioned why I began flagging, I come from drugs, drinking, all of that kind of crazy background, and God miraculously saved my life over 15 times. I fell over uh, 800, over 900 feet uh, from a parachute accident, and I'm still here walking around instead of, you know, dead, and a whole bunch of other things. That, so I, I have a tremendous gratefulness to God and, and so I just had to express that in a more expressive way. So we're going to play a couple of songs and uh, just kind of demonstrate uh, what we do.
just watch an incredible night unfold before you, but just see it happen and not participate. But I'm believing that everyone else to lean in, press in towards God and embrace all that He has. And the amazing promise of the Bible is that as we lean into God, as we draw near to God, is that He draws near to us. And then He comes to change us and reveal Himself to us and speak to us. Amen. Well, come on, like from the front to the back, all around this incredible auditorium, let's look down the hands towards God tonight. And we're going to commit this into His hands. God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, above the song.
a great fall style. Like women's tops starting at $15.99. Men's long sleeve must have starting at $17.59.
So these these uh, big ones are called sails, and, and when we had these made, the lady that made them, they're called. It was de just to declare the glory of God, and the ones that uh, my wife was using with the hearts. That's the heart of God toward this. Now the colors, the the fire is so. That God will burn up that which is not supposed to be there. And so, and that's his love burning up that. Would, and it's not a fire that would burn you, but it's a fire that takes away that which we doesn't belong, so to speak. And in the natural, things like when you, uh, silver has to be put in a hot pot, and then when it gets, uh, like, made, uh, totally pure, all the in infirmity, the stuff that's not supposed to be in it comes to the top and gets off. So God, with his fire, the fire is love, burns up, things like that, and, and the purple represents the royalty that we are in him. And of course, when I was using this one, the red represents the blood of Jesus, and, and when using it and floating it over us, his blood is over us, and it's um, you know, he pours it in us, on us, over us, and uh, so that's kind of a representation of what a lot of the flags mean and, and why we use them like that, and they have really a a distinct meaning and bringing the presence and you know, that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for doing that. Bringing us closer to the Lord. I got to say, before all, I wanted to share with you some of the people that Martha read about in Hebrews 11. And it just gives us a thumbnail sketch of these different people in the Bible. But I want to take us a little bit further into that so we can see more about what God did in their lives and through their lives how it was written down for us so that we don't know. That way we can know God and know what He does. If we don't know what He does, can't really figure out much about God because He does so many things. But the main thing He does is He loves us. And so He sent His Son to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins according to the scriptures. And then he was buried in a rich man's tomb. And after three days, he rose up again to give us a new life. So the new life is what he really wants to give us. And he wants to take us to heaven to be with him. We want to always be here in this facility, someday we'll be with the Lord. And he says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. In other words, if we die or all our loved ones before us are going to be with the Lord and they've died, he says, if they know Jesus as their Savior, he says, I'm going to resurrect them up out of the grave. He says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then if we are still alive when he comes, he's going to take us up to be with him. So he's going to take us and he's going to transform our bodies like into the body of Jesus. And so we won't be limited by these things here that we're limited by now, by pain, being in carts and chairs and stuff that can't get around. We won't be limited by all of that. We're going to have a new life. I know that we call it the celestial life. 
is if we look back at Jesus and when Jesus, when he come back after the resurrection, he went into the room that was closed and the door that was locked and he just went back right through that. He's not limited by the things that we're limited with. And he's going to make our, our bodies like unto his glorious body. So he's going to take us to heaven to be with him. And we'll be there for a long time. And it could be during that tribulation time that the Bible's talked about. It's going to be seven years of tribulation. And then he says, then I'm going to come back to this earth and I'm going to bring my saints with me, all of us who is raised from the dead or raised up to be with him for that period of time. And he's going to bring us back with him. And he says he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. We can't comprehend that kind of life span. But we're going to, he says, there's going to be no death, there'll be no crying, no weeping, no pain. Our bodies will be made like unto his glorious body. And then when he rose up into heaven, after he talked to the disciples there, and he told them he was going to go back to be with the Father, and he just rose up. And they disappeared in the clouds. But he says, don't be comfortless. He says, I'm going to come back again. And when I come back, that's when he's going to raise the dead in Christ first. And then those are going to lie. And going to rise and meet him in the air. So there's a lot more th things that we could talk about that. But I just wanted to let you know that part of it before I tell you about these people in Hebrews 11. The first one is uh, uh, Enoch. So Enoch, in that scripture, it says, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. In other words, this is the only man that God took to heaven. Like he's going to take us at that resurrection. He's going to take us to be with him. He took Enoch to heaven. This is in the fire chariot he went up. And he didn't die. But God somehow translated his body into that celestial body so that he could live. And be with God forever and ever. So Enoch was, that's his testimony for us that God is going to do that. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we can't see this with our eyes, but we can see it with our heart if we believe in Jesus and believe in his word he's given to us. We can believe that he's going to do this. And we will just be like Enoch to go up to be with the Lord. And there's another one that talks about uh, well, there's Noah, and then there's uh, Moses. Let's just talk a little bit about Moses. Probably most of you heard a lot of the story about Moses, but let me just kind of refresh our memory on it. 